Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Jeff Mendelson, and this is the One Big Tip Podcast. And today, I am really pleased to have with me on the line Joe Balestrino. Joe has been actively involved in the SEO industry for several years, longer than most digital marketing agencies have even existed. In his professional career, Joe has authored four books, launched a company uh, called Four Point Digital, and has been featured in publications like NPR, uh, NPR, CNBC, and Search Engine Journal. And today we'll hear about the best online marketing tips, including an offer for a free Google audit. So Joe, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I appreciate you uh, putting me on the show. Yeah, so this is going to be a lot of fun. So you and I work in uh, you and I work in similar circles. I also own a digital marketing agency. I'd like to know a little bit more about your background and how you got to where you are today uh, in your profession. Man, uh, my career expands almost twenty years in digital marketing, which I guess I'm dating myself. But um, I started out as a self-taught web designer. Uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s, uh, just experimenting with, you know, what the internet was back then. And uh, I kind of taught myself web design skills. Uh, I wouldn't call them skills. I wasn't very good at designing sites at the time. Um, but I, I did a good enough job to start getting people inquiring about web design services. And a question I always got was, how were you able to rank for affordable web design? And at the time, I had no idea. I didn't even know that I did that. And so I started getting involved in, you know, learning more about search engine optimization. Um, and, and what I learned was, you know, as, as I was designing websites, one thing that I, I, I saw immediately was just because you had a great website didn't necessarily translate into, you know, business. You know, you could have a website, but you know, it's not enough to, to drive business. And so after a, a website was designed, it was like, no, well, now what? What's the next step? And so as I started learning more about digital marketing, I, I started writing uh, blogs. I created a forum. Uh, I had a podcast at the time with my former company, which was called Mr. SEO. And I just set out to educate people on what was good marketing and what was bad marketing and things that I, were, I was doing that was working and just offered those tips out to everyone so that they could start doing it themselves uh, because a lot of businesses that I was working with at the time were, were just small businesses and then uh, which who didn't have large budgets to, to spend on advertising. And, and just by doing that, I, I wound up running an agency without even knowing I was. I was just sharing this information and blogging about it. And uh, I guess the podcast at the time also helped elevate um, you know, the business. And I was running an agency and I had big firms, big companies reaching out to me uh, asking for, for help. And, and then I started had to, I had to hire staff and have people help me uh, run this now agency that I was running. You know, what's interesting is that uh, the way you're telling the story is almost identical to the way I tell mine. Right. It's, you know, it started out as this, as this thing where you could just do, uh, uh, where you could just do web design for people. And then you realize that there is so much more that businesses need. And, you know, even if they didn't even ask you for that, like you then had to step up to deliver. Right. So you started out doing the websites and it's like, great, you know, but the days of build it, then they will come. Those are long gone. Right. So you can't just go build a website and then walk away. You know, how are you going to market it? How are you going to get those, uh, you know, how are you going to get that website found? And that's really where the secret sauce comes in, right? And how you can actually get people to, you know, to the website because, you know, it's just like building a store. And if, you know, you build a store and it's probably nice and you have lights up on the top and all that, but if you don't have any traffic for people to come in, then why are you doing it, Right. Well, and yeah, and it's and it's discouraging to a business owner when, when they build a website and they, they don't and even till this day, like almost 20 years later, it's still a, a problem as I see it as a problem is everybody focuses on the business idea and then they focus on the website, but then they don't think about anything after. And being a strong background in SEO, to me, it's 
you know, planning out what, what's the services, what my landing pages are going to be, what am I optimizing for, uh, what's my blog content going to be, what are the topics going to be about, what are the keywords I'm going after. And still, a lot of people still contact me and say, you know, my website's, you know, not ranking, or I don't know what to do. And it's, and it's like, before you even build your website, you have to have an SEO strategy, a marketing strategy, some kind of strategy, because that strategy is going to evolve around the content you have on your website. So it's, you know, everything's minimal now. Everything looks like an app. But uh, if you don't think ahead of time of how you're going to structure your content, how that's going to, you know, line up with your marketing, you're, you're kind of going to take a step back once you launch the site and pay all this money to have a site designed to now have to revamp it to be, you know, in line with your marketing strategy. You know, what's really interesting about that is, you know, just search engine optimization. The way I explain it to people nowadays is that you're playing, you're playing a game of football, right? Against another team that makes up all the rules, changes them at will, and you just got to go along with it. Right. So, you know, you want to get ranked for Google. There's, you know, for a certain keyword, there are so many factors that go into it, right? You can't just go and say, well, I want to be the best, uh, you know, the best dog groomer in Miami. You know, that's not, uh, you know, A, it's probably not the best, uh, you know, the best marketable keyword phrase to rank for. And B, as digital marketers, we don't own that platform, right? So people are going to pay us a lot of money to influence Google and other search engines in order to in order to try to increase the rank. But at the end of the day, we don't have that much control over it, right? How do you explain that to people that, you know, when they think like, oh, I want to rank number one for this particular keyword term and then, you know, sort of deflate them or bring them back down to earth on what is really achievable versus what it is that they think that they want? Well, yeah, you, what, what I, I typically like to do is uh, my process is to educate. So I'll, I'll talk to a person and I'll say, what, what are you thinking about? What do you think you should rank for? And they'll say, you know, something very broad, you know, like say shoes. I, I'm like, okay, that's great shoes. But if you Google shoes, there's no intent around it. Like, you know, when you, a, as you add more keywords to the term, the more specific you get and the more, the more keywords involved, the easier it is to rank. Um, so think, of, think about it in those terms, right? Maybe a long-term goal is shoes, but you may sell men's shoes, uh, women's shoes, maybe they're brown leather shoes, uh, men's brown leather shoes, size six, or they're loafers. So th there's, there, you, you have to be very specific in the beginning and then have a, a strategy where you're going to go after the, the low-hanging fruit or the easier to rank terms. And then you have terms that are a little bit more on the broad side, but are still very competitive and, and hard to rank for, but that's like a long-term strategy. And then, you know, if you can go after the very broad term, but it's, it's, it's important to understand that, you know, how do people search for what you offer and do you show up for those keywords? And if it's an SEO strategy and you're going up against people that sell the same exact thing, and there's a million of them, it's going to be really hard to compete in that space. And people, and I don't, I don't like to discourage businesses. I just try to get them to think differently. If you're selling an iPhone case, there's so much competition for it. It's almost virtually impossible to, to rank for that keyword. But what, what, how can we get a little bit more specific? Is it a, a specific type of case? Is it custom? Well, like what can we do to kind of make things a little bit more specific to what you're doing? And then, give them a visual plan of, you know, I, I always tell people if you're nowhere now, shoot for 12 months, at least, you know, most SEOs will tell you a, a new site, give it 12 months to rank for any term. So you have to be invested for 12 months because it takes time to take all these steps to get to where you want to go. And even then, if it's super competitive, then it's another road. And if, if you're offering something that is new a new invention or a new service that no one knows exists, then your challenge is educating the marketplace and showing up for terms that would, you know, or, or problems that your product or service solves, and then kind of have to train and, and, and educate the market in that space. And that's a whole different type of marketing strategy altogether. You know, what's interesting about that is uh, there are basically two tracks to getting this done. You can invest in the SEO in the SEO route, 
which basically involves, you know, like optimizing the site and then getting, you know, backlinks from other places and a good and a good search engine optimizer is going to look at that entire landscape. But like you said, you still need time, right? So one way to cut through that time is to pay for it, right? Which is where the paid ads come in. And what happens there is that you can't, well, you don't necessarily, uh, you don't necessarily set it up for, for the long term. You know, you set up these, uh, you set up these campaigns that basically, if you light it up in the morning, your ads will start showing in the afternoon. But the main difference is that now you are paying for that placement. Now you're paying to be on the top of that you know, of that, uh, of that keyword phrase that people may be searching for and it may or may not, uh, bring you business and it may or may not be even profitable for you. Let's talk a little bit about your one big tip, which is how to maximize, you know, your success by going down the Google ads route, as opposed to the search engine route so that you can get these businesses you know, the business that they want and that they're paying for and that you're almost guaranteed to get for them as opposed to a wish list of influencing a search engine that you're doing with organic search. How does that work? So, so there's pros and cons, right? As you mentioned, you know, you have to pay. You know, pay to play. You have to pay to show up for these keywords um, where on the SEO side, you don't. But with the paid side is you can get data much faster and think about the SEO strategy where you, you have an idea of what the keyword is you wanna rank for and it could take you months or years to get there to only realize that that doesn't translate to business. On the paid side, you can now go after every key term that you think you, your product or service should show up for, but now you have data. How many people clicked? How many people turned into leads? How many sales? And then you can take that data and then you know fine tune it and focus in more on it to improve sales, you know, by focusing on the keywords that are making you money. And then, you know, eventually down the line, you can turn that into an, an SEO strategy. But the, the paid search side um, is, you know, being able to take keywords that you think uh, can turn into business into finding out exactly which keywords turn into business. And that's worth money, the data in itself, even bad data. Uh, for someone like me, it's still good data because I know that, you know, that that, that particular data or keywords uh, is it doesn't resonate with your business. And then I can take that data and, and, and expand upon it. So when you start out with a Google with a Google ads campaign, the campaign that you're paying to be in, what are some of the considerations that you need to uh, that? Uh, that you need to be putting into your foundation that is different from the from the search engine optimization uh, side. Well, I think they're very similar. When, when you bid on keywords, you know, with the example I gave earlier of shoes, let's say we, we were advertising on meds brown loafers, let's say, you wouldn't send a user to the homepage of your website and then assume that they're going to navigate to the section that they're looking for, or use your search function on your website to find it. They want to go right to a page that has the product that they Googled, right? Because if they don't, it's easier for them to hit the back button and click another ad uh, versus exploring your website. And the SEO side is the same way. We would optimize for that key phrase for that particular page. So it's, it's grouping keywords that are specific together to a specific ad that speaks about those keywords to the landing page that has those keywords on it whether it's a service or a product so that we get the highest quality score possible so that we can then make sure like, Oh, we're driving the right people, the right keywords to the right page. And then, you know, do an analysis of the data that we gather over the days and weeks that we're running the campaign to make informed decisions of what to move forward with, where with SEO, you can't, you really don't get that feedback from Google. Google used to give us that data years ago, but then took it away. So we don't really know which keywords the pages are, you know, which keywords are driving business, but we can on the paid side. And, and that data is, is, like I said earlier, very valuable. Let's talk about price for a minute. Cause I think that's something that a lot of people get, uh, get a little bit of con uh, confused about. Um, when you're talking about price, you know, and I'm not talking about your fee at this point, I'm talking about, you know, like what you need to pay in order to be on Google ads and uh, for a, you know, for a particular keyword set or for a campaign, 
a lot of people, you know, like come in saying, well, what's the minimum, right? Or how, or I only, or they start out by saying, I only want to pay 20 cents a click, right? <laughs> and I think that both of those, you know, both of those statements really, you know, miss the mark on exactly what it is that you, that we're trying to do, you know, for the client. How do you, um, how do you address those concerns when it comes to price and budget and how much a company should be spending on paid ads as opposed to just them trying to dictate to you what they, what they want done? So again, I educate the client and I, and I explain it in, in a way where if, if you think about the products or services that you want to advertise for, and, and more importantly, an idea of how many keywords you would want to advertise on. So if you say, I want to advertise on a hundred keywords and your budget is $5 a day, you're not going to get any results. You, there's no point in doing it at that point. Now, if you take keywords and you sell shoes and you just advertise in the word shoe, sure, that cost per click is probably 30 cents, but the intent behind it is unknown. So you'll show up for anything about, you know, how to make leather shoes to, you know, what kind of shoes do cats wear and all kinds of weird things that have nothing to do with your business. But as soon as you get very specific with the keywords, that cost goes up dramatically because the intent is is more precise and you're going to pay more. And, and like I said, it also depends on your industry. If you, you know, if you're a housekeeper, uh, a cost per lead uh, may run you 35 bucks because your service is maybe 100 bucks a month. Where if you're an attorney uh, in New York City and you, uh, you're one of those crane accident attorneys where if a crane falls in New York City, your case gets on the TV and, and it's worth you know, millions of dollars, that course per lead is going to cost you, you know, maybe $500, $600 per lead. So you have to keep in mind like what what you know what your average cost per lead is and, and like an easy formula is to think about how many leads do you want a month and how much is a realistic cost per acquisition and that's roughly how much you should be spending a month um, and again if you have too many keywords your budget will will never uh, you you'll never get the data because paid search is about narrowing down the keywords so if your budget is not large maybe you start out with five keywords you spend as much as you can to max out so that your keywords are showing all day long. And then at the end of 30 days, what are your results? Take, you know, the winners and throw more money at them and you cut the losers. And then you, you then you can grow because, uh, you know, you've spent a hundred dollars a day, let's say, and you found that two keywords really work. The other three don't. So as soon as you turn those three keywords off and funnel your budget into the two that have, now you're automatically generating sales because you're funneling more money to, you know, towards the winners. You know, what a great strategy for that, you know, because what you really, uh, you know, you mentioned a couple times already, it's all about educating the client, right? It's all about making sure that they understand, you know, what can actually happen as opposed to what they may have read or understood or misunderstood by some news story of what, a, what actually is possible, right? There are a lot of things that we can do as digital marketers, right there, you know, I tell people there are a lot of ways to spend money with me. Right. But at the same time, you know, how, how many of those activities are actually going to be worth it for you? Because what works for a doctor may not work for a lawyer and it certainly won't work for a plumber. Right. But the idea is that you bring in the expert and you bring in the, you know, the strategy so that, uh, so that it can work. And you do make sure that all of those pieces, you know, in the timeline are, working correctly. And that's really, you know, where everything's at. Thank you so much for sharing that, Joe. Can you please let everyone know how they can, uh, how they can find you and how they can reach out to you directly if they want to learn more? Sure. They can visit my site, uh, fourpointdigital.com. That's the number four point digital.com. Just hit me up on the, on one of the forms on the site Tell me you want a free Google ads audit and I'll take a look at your account and tell you what's what's working for you and what's not. Uh, or you can connect with me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, you guys can connect with me that way as well. Amazing. Joe, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a really interesting discussion. I really appreciate you taking the time to break down, you know, with the difference between, you know, the search engine side and the paid ad side. And it just really helps in, you know, uh, helping people make a decision on which direction they want to go when they're, when they're investing their ad dollars. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.